another edition here of Krantz's Corner, and I'm very excited about this one. We get to talk to one of my buddies, Eric Reed, the Miami Heat voice, Valley Sports. He's a day one as I like to call, in the Miami Heat organization. Uh, actually, probably day like negative 25 or 30, whenever anything was started in the background at this point. Eric, welcome back to Krantz's Corner. Good to be on the corner with you, Zach. Always uh, good to see you. Love having you here, and now we're at the, the time of the year where the Heat... They're, the Heat are always in the conversation of nobody wants to see the Heat in the first round. Nobody wants to see the Heat in the playoffs. I love conversations like that. But in order to get to that, you got to get through the dreaded play-in that now two years in a row this team is in. They have a humongous one now with Philadelphia coming up on Wednesday night. Uh, this is big. I don't think anyone wants to see Philly either at this point. I think Miami and Philly now sitting in this play-in game and all the teams at the top of the Eastern Conference probably scared of both at this point. Well, there's no doubt about that, Zach. I mean, um, the the dangers of the play-in round, both for the teams in it and for those top seeds waiting to see who's going to emerge. Philadelphia uh, would not have been a, a seventh seed had Embiid stayed healthy for right. most of the year. He was on his way to an MVP caliber season before tearing his meniscus. But I can remember, you know, the very first time the Heat made the playoffs, it took a Cleveland-Atlanta result to get Miami in. And and Kevin Lockery was on the set of Sports Wrap as the head coach with Joe Zagaki and the late Jim Mandish pumping his fist right. when the Heat got in. The second time we got in was the, was when I made that call. They win their way in. They win their way in, right? They got to do the same thing. They got to win their way in to the 2024 playoffs. And listen, it, it's it's hard to draw too much out of the four games that Miami and Philly split this year. The Heat won the first two. The Sixers won the last two. Joel Embiid played in one game, the last one. Jimmy Butler played in just one game against Philadelphia, the last game. Now, that was in April. You know, listen, the Heat finished, I'm going to bounce around, the Heat finished a game behind the three teams ahead of them. Right. When you think about the difference one game makes, you know, I, I think to some of the losses at home, Atlanta on Udonis Haslam night, the, the night we retired his banner, right. and Jersey. Um, losing to Washington late in the season at home, losing twice to the Brooklyn Nets, who are a sub-500 team this year. And the two most painful losses of the season, as far as I was concerned, um, the loss at home to Philly and then the late loss at Indiana. Right. That loss to Philly, Zach, um, left, some, left some, some, some pain because the Heat were up by eight with six and a half minutes left in that game. They could have put the Sixers away that night and secured the tiebreaker, and at the very least would have had home court for this game. Now, having said that, maybe I, I'm not sure what an asset home court would be. Rather be there than not, but the Heat this year had a better record on the road right. than they did at home. But the Sixers closed that game on a 15-3 to run. Uh, Tyrese Maxey and Joel Embiid, for most of that game, felt like they were unguardable. So that's the challenge coming in. You know, if you let those two guys be what they believe they are, the two best players on the floor, um, it's going to be a harder game to win. There's, there's also the whole Kyle Lowry angle. Right. Uh, he's 2-0 and against Miami with the Sixers since, since he maneuvered his way there late in the season. So we'll see how that goes. And I think the other big thing, Zach, is the Heat's injury situation, which will become a little clearer as today moves on. Duncan Robinson and Terry Rozier have missed the last few games. Kevin Love hurt his arm in, in the season finale. You know, all three of those guys are very important to Miami, hoping that, you know, all three will be able to play, but we'll find that out later on. Right. And it's crazy, too, because we all know uh, Spo at this point getting ready for that rotation for the playoffs, even though it's just a Philly game to play in at this point, and you're not going to really have everything set until you know you're playing if it is going to be the Knicks or it's going to be the Celtics if they make it into both, uh, either one of those rounds. Um, and having those three guys kind of questionable, you know, kind of thinking about those three, that's tough right now. Worst time to have an injury is right before the playoff starter in the middle of the playoffs in the Heat. have seen that the last couple of years where guys have gotten injured either right when the playoffs started or right before. This is a tough one here. And I'll tell you, I honestly think it's crazy to say, and I love the way Duncan Robinson's been playing when he's out there, Terry Rozier also, I kind of really want Kevin Love back and healthy for the playoffs because for some reason he just has a little bit of that oomph when you need it in the playoffs. Both the other guys 
Rozier and Duncan, full rotation, perfect guys to have, and you want them both healthy. But I kind of want Kevin Love to be healthy too for these players. I think he'll be able to play a big role at certain points. We need all hands on deck. You, right. you need everybody. Um, talking about injuries, the, the Heat is unfortunately accustomed to that. Eric Spolster used a franchise record 35 different lineups in the 82 games. That's the most in franchise history. Um, you remember last year, the um, the unexpected trip to the finals began with that 130-point game in game one at Milwaukee, and Tyler Hero got hurt in the first game, missed the rest of the playoffs. Now, the Heat struggled this year for most of the season to score enough points to win. The two problem areas were scoring enough and, and winning with more consistency at home. So you take away Duncan Robinson and Rozier. Now, I know that Caleb Martin, Jaime Jaquez uh, have both played well in Rozier and Robinson's absence. You'd like to have everybody. The floor spacing of Robinson, the, the creativity and the ability to make something out of nothing uh, from Rozier. Hopefully they can play, but, you know, I'm, I'm cautious about Duncan because he had the back issue. He missed five games. He came back and was not effective, did not look healthy in the five games he played, then sat out again. Rozier, hopefully uh, he'll be fine. The, the Heat obviously need him. And, and, and Kevin Love, listen, to, to, to Thomas Bryant's credit, he played inconsistently and sporadically throughout the year in terms of minutes. But when given the opportunity, especially late in the season, uh, Bryant did very well. So the Heat have had the depth to weather the injuries and overcome right. most of them. But obviously, you'd like to see everybody uh, available for these games. And you you already mentioned it. If the Heat win tomorrow night in Philadelphia, Wednesday night, um, they'll go right to New York. Game one would be uh, Saturday. We don't know the time yet, but it would be a Saturday game at Madison Square Garden. If the Heat lose at Philadelphia, right. they would come home for a Friday night play-in game against the Chicago Atlanta winner. That that play-in game is also on Wednesday. Sounds familiar too, doesn't it? Uh, it's right. we, we had to play both Atlanta and Chicago right. last year in the play-in. It was a harrowing adventure because the Heat lost. You know, we almost missed the playoffs last year, Zach, in the worst possible way any team could miss the playoffs, losing two play-in games at home. Um, I hope it doesn't come down to a second play-in game. If Me it too. does, uh, it's almost like being in the NCAA tournament, win and advance or lose and go home. So that's the jeopardy you put yourself in when you're a play-in team. And, and that's exactly where Miami is now going into this game in Philadelphia. All right. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a rough one. You never want to put yourself in this play in position because it's so, it's so tricky. I mean, like you said, we saw it last year after losing that first game in the, in the play in last year, I was scared that Friday night going into that game thinking, man, the season could be over with a loss tonight. It's unbelievable. Survive in advance. Like you said, like that's exactly what it comes down to here and there. I will tell you this. I'm excited to see because of the way he's been playing, especially lately, uh, Tyler Hero at full strength in the playoffs because that is something that was dearly missed last year, even with a finals run, even with the run they made. Imagine the healthy Tyler in that run also at certain points. But it's going to be good to see uh, Tyler kind of being able to show off a little bit more in these playoffs, hopefully staying healthy and making this run with this Heat team once they get out of the play-in. That's, that's a great point, Zach. I mean, it, it, it is important to the Heat. I, I think it's as maybe even more important for Tyler Hero. Right. Uh, he missed last year's run. You know, you could overcome injuries to a certain point. When the Heat got to the NBA Finals against Denver, they needed more offense. Right. Um, listen, it reminds me of the 2020 Finals in the bubble when the Heat took the Lakers six games and lost Dragic and Bam oh. in that series. Um, how different things could be, but injuries are a part of it. Right. I, you know, I, I think, you know, two of the brightest spots late in the season for me, uh, how effective Hero was in his return after missing, you know, like six weeks and 20 games, he came back, you know, almost seamlessly. Looked like he had not missed a minute. And he averaged over 20 a game. He got to the free throw line a lot late in the season. And I thought, you know, it was unfortunate when he got hurt that game. And in, in, I believe it, it was uh, late February, early March, or maybe late February, February 29th, I believe, at New Orleans. That's the game he hurt his knee and his foot. And I remember seeing him after the game, and we had a conversation that went something like this. Um, and his scoring was a little less at that point. It was right. right after the Heat had lost seven in a row. They had that team meeting. 
And I think one of the things that came out of it for Tyler was it helped him grow up with his game. Right. Um, he's always had a mature game, but I thought he made a real significant turn of a game that impacts winning. You could score a lot of points in this league and not impact winning. Um, what I saw him do, it, you know, leading up to that New Orleans game and since he's been back, is he's still getting his 18 to 20 points a game, but he's making every right decision. He's right. he's making passes that are making his teammates better. Uh, his defense has improved. I, I think his game impacted winning more than ever in that brief time after the seven-game losing streak before he got hurt and since he's been back. And and I, I think that's a major turn for Tyler. He's always had extraordinary skill level and talent. And and that's part of the growth process, Zach, for all young players. And I, I think more and more players are coming into the league with, with a high, high skill level. But what's not as advanced is, is understanding their role within a team and how to impact winning. We talked about that, and Spo did as well, with Jaime Jaquez Jr. It's not only playing four years at UCLA, it, because you, you can't just say, just because a guy played four years somewhere, he's an automatic right. success. But when you look at Jaquez, a guy that accepted, embraced, and excelled in each role that he was in, from a, a, you know, a seldom-used freshman to a, a role-playing sophomore to a junior who started to a senior who led. Um, and he figured out how to help his team win. Too few players stay with a program, whether it's high school or college, long enough to understand the team mentality and the concept of what can I do on this given night to help my team win? And sometimes that's scoring. Other times it's making the right pass or the right read or or the screen that sets somebody else free. Right. So there's so much involved in and that's why you have to be patient with, with players. Some get it slowly. Some never get it at all. Some have it immediately. Uh, with Tyler, it's been a steady progression to that. And I'm, I'm excited for him. Uh, I know how much he's looking forward to this opportunity. Listen, before we could talk about the 2024 NBA playoffs, so we got to win our way in. That's right. And, and it's all about dealing with Maxi and Embiid and and heroes, I believe, will be part of the solution, uh, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's so crazy when we're talking about this playing game. And I know we've already said it a couple times that it's Philly. Like, it, it's just it's incredible. It's, you know, Atlanta and, and Chicago, I could see there were kind of at the bottom there. That's fine. But man, to have Philly in one of these playing games and to have this to be the game to decide who's going to play the next. This isn't it's an interesting play. And I, it's working. Obviously, the NBA wanted to see what was going to happen with it. It's obviously worked and worked out pretty good because I'm really looking forward to the next couple nights of basketball, knowing, like you said, it's almost like the NCAA tournament. If you lose, you're in big trouble or you're out at this point, especially if you're in that 9-10. That but, man, this is it right yeah. here. So the playoffs have started. Um, and one thing we've seen since he's been here, and listen, I know Father Time takes is undefeated. I get it. But for some reason, he's been able to turn on a switch every single year in the playoffs since he's been here with Jimmy Butler. There's almost no other person – outside of the normals like you you and me have covered for years the Udonis the Dwayne Wade's the really good heat players the lifers to win championships but man nothing would would make me happier right now as a heat fan than to see Jimmy Butler you know and raise a banner after the season because he would be able to bring a championship here to Miami playoff Jimmy is such a fun thing to talk about but we can't depend on that every single year in these playoffs Yet he proves us wrong almost every year while he's there by having one of those series or having one of those games or a couple of games in a row where he is the most unstoppable force on the court. It is fun to see him play too in this point, but I got to see Bam and Tyler and these other guys pick it up so Jimmy's not out of energy come the fourth quarter in all these games. Yeah, listen, it's going to take more than Jimmy, right. um, but it will take, uh, uh, you know, the Heat is at their best when Jimmy is aggressive and getting to the free throw line and getting into the paint. Um, and, and there's no question that Miami's offense, this is how it runs, through Jimmy and through Bam. Right. They're going to get the play calls. Tyler Hero is going to get high usage. Those are the main three guys. But it starts with Jimmy Butler. And his track record with the Heat speaks for itself. Um, I, you know, I feel really, really comfortable saying this. The three uh, most dynamic playoff performers in the history of the Miami Heat are LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, 
and Jimmy Butler. His Absolutely. stat, he's got more 40 point games than any player in Heat history in the playoffs. The plot is so rich and thick. Jimmy spending one year with Philly, Kyle Lowry, three and a half years with Miami, and and, and or two and a half years with Miami, and now of, of the starting point guard for the 76ers. Nick Nurse, who we know so well as the, the head right. coach of Toronto. Um, two creative, intelligent, outstanding head coaches, two aggressive teams. It's going to feel like a playoff game. And, and listen, the, it's tantalizing because how much fun would a Heat Knicks series be oh. to, to rekindle all of that? And even though the Knicks had the upper hand on Miami during the regular season, the Heat have a recent win over New York. You, you know, I listen, I hope we could talk next week about dealing with Jalen Brunson. And if you could beat Philadelphia on Wednesday night, you'd go in with confidence and momentum and feeling good in what could be, you know, a dramatic first round series. I hope we get that. We'll see oh, what happens. Me though. too. And and we just talked, me and you, right after that Knicks win. And I said, this is this is one of those big, this is a win that you have to have. Like it's one of those Knicks, it's just that rivalry. You, you, it doesn't matter. The Knicks could be in, in, in the 15 spot in the East and the Heat could be the one seed. You still want to get that win. But now, Looking forward to could be a playoff series and round one with the Heat and Knicks again. This could be really fun. But like you said, got to take care of business Wednesday night in Philadelphia. What's uh, what's going on with all the coverage with you guys at Bally Sports, especially for the next couple of days until the first round does start in the heater there? Thank you for asking that. First of all, Zach, I think for the new generation of Heat fans, uh, they could use this. A little refresher yes. on yeah. what Heat Knicks playoff basketball is all about. Because when we talk about those four consecutive series, oh. Uh, that was the greatest rivalry during that time span in NBA history. Uh, that was like 24 tw to 28 years ago. That's a long time ago. Uh, if we could use a, a new batch of Heat Knicks playoff memories. In terms of our playoff coverage on Bally Sports and Bally Sports Sun and the Bally Sports app, unfortunately, we get fenced out of the play-in games. Right. If the Heat play one, whether they play one or two play-in games, that's on national TV only. Um, we do get to do the first round. The only Good. thing that knocks us off the air in round one is an ABC telecast. And there's only one of those per weekend day. Um, so we know the Knicks and Heat would start on Saturday. Right. Um, would that be the ABC game at night? I don't know. Uh, the Heat and Celtics would start on Sunday. Um, it's sort of like a roulette ball bouncing on that wheel. Right. So I'm hoping we get to do game one of either series. We're going to have to wait and find out. Um, we'll have great pre and post game coverage for every game that we do. And then if the heat are fortunate enough to advance to the second round, uh, no more local TV coverage, but we'll have those extensive post game shows following every single playoff game, uh, the heat is in. So it's all out there in front of us, Zach, but, uh, you know how it goes. It's, right. it's, it's not only one game at a time. It right now it's one possession at a time. Right, it's, right. it's a great time of year to, to it enjoy is the most competitive basketball you can watch. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to Wednesday night. It's going to bite my nails, but I'm looking forward to it because I don't want to lose that game. I want the Knicks in round one. I want an old school series. I want, like you said, this new generation of Heat fan to get this. I want to play the Knicks every year in the playoffs if we can and beat them every year. I'd love it. First round, second round, Eastern Conference Finals, whatever you want at this point. Nothing would make me happier as a Heat fan than every year give the Knicks and send them home. So we'll see what happens. And the Knicks are the two seed this year. So all the pressure would be on New York at this point too, uh, right then and there. Eric, I'm excited for the first round to start to see all you guys. Hopefully we get through the next couple of days without a, that much sweating and then Bally Sports to see you guys every single night. It is so much fun during these playoffs with uh, the, the heat going on, the Panthers going on. Let's get that every other night thing going like we've done the last couple of years. So South Florida could really be the kind of the mecca of sports once again for the next couple of weeks. And thanks as always for coming on, especially spending a little bit of time before this playoff, this play in game Wednesday night. Zach, always fun hanging out on the corner with you and uh, couldn't agree with you more. It's, it's a great time um, in all of South Florida sports and, and, and that Miami, New York thing, it doesn't matter what sport it is. No, nope. it's got sizzle to it. There's so many South Flor Floridians up in New York and so many New Yorkers down here it helps this this incredible rivalry. You know, Jets Dolphins has been great forever. Right. Uh, my Heat and Knicks forever. has been great for a long time too. So it would be rich, but right now it's it's only right. about one thing. It's right. finding a way to beat and beat. And we didn't even talk about listen. Embiid missed a bunch of games late in the season yep. uh, with meniscus surgery on his knee. Came back 
and in his second game back, tweaked the knee, did not play in the regular season finale. So we're going to be watching him closely to see exactly how healthy he is. We know how difficult he is to defend, and Maxi is among the best players and among the quickest players in the league. But the Heat, we we know it's 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 about it's about defense and it's about sharing the basketball and moving the ball, moving bodies, and and basically playing your best game in almost every single game in front of you. Right. This is it. This is the time of the year we're all been waiting for. Eric, thank you so much, as always, for coming on Crancis Corner. And like I said, I can't wait to see you guys this weekend for some local coverage, get these playing games out of the way. Just win Wednesday night so we don't have to sweat it out Friday and let someone else sweat it out Friday night. We can get ready for the Knicks. I'll talk to you again soon, hopefully right after round one starts. You know, I'll come out and I'll bug you somehow, some way, but I always love having you on the corner. Thanks, Eric. Thank you, Zach. All right, that's Eric Reed getting ready and priming us for Wednesday night's play-in game heat and 76ers here on Krantz's Corner.